Hey there, friends. You will not believe the video that I have for you today. You guys know that I support law enforcement who are doing their job right, just like I support garbage men who are doing their job right, post office workers who are doing their job right, people picking up trash on the road who are doing their job right, attorneys, doctors. I appreciate all those people who are doing their jobs right and respecting other people. But I have zero respect for any garbage man, attorney, doctor, or law enforcement officer who abuses their power and does not do their job right and simply does not respect the people that they are hired to work for. Today, we're going to see that last category, the people who don't respect other people and who abuse their supposed power. In July of 2022, last summer, there was a shootout at a particular location. This shootout was captured on some sort of a ring doorbell type camera. As you can see here, two very well-trained individuals are firing at a house. It looks like they're firing at the yellow house. You'll notice on the porch of that yellow house, it looks like people around that car area and on the porch area are firing back at them. It also appears that at the back of the blue house, somebody else is firing from that direction as well. This statement from the Lorraine Police Department in Ohio, this area that this shooting took place in, states that the neighbors that they questioned didn't want to be identified. And they stated that a green Jeep Cherokee, which is the vehicle, one of the vehicles that you saw in the driveway, is normally parked in the driveway of 126 West 27th Street. No one responded to that door at 126 27th but they did observe two cameras on the front of the house. We'll get more to that camera here in a second. A search of our local files showed Zandra, or excuse me, Jandre Brazil residing at 126 West 27th. Brazil matches the description of the suspect that the original caller described with a gun. They go on to state that in the video, you see a male identified as Jordan Barnett running from the backyard area in between 122 and 126 of his residence. In watching the video, Barnett is seen as the last shot is being fired. He's wearing blue jeans and black underwear. While Bar <laughs> how they can see his underwear. While Barnett is in view near the Jeep, you can see the other subject still standing on the back porch of 122. Now all that data is super important because that's gonna kind of set up, if you wanna call it probable cause, or at least suspicion, of why this next video took place several months later. On this video, just two weeks ago in February, February 15th to be exact, three juveniles are walking across this street. Now you'll notice this is a residential street. This is not a commercial street. It does not have crosswalks identified. So as you know, in residential streets like this, people are continuously walking across the streets. They are, again, there's no crosswalks, so they're not looking for that. So this is not considered a hot spot for jaywalking. However, this house that we're looking at from this porch right here is that yellow house that we saw in that previous video where apparently shots were fired from and you had people getting in a vehicle and leaving after that. So these three guys are walking in this house. Cops pull up, that is a local law enforcement officer and an ATF agent with them. The ATF agent has the black hat, the law enforcement officer, the local law enforcement officer has the white Nike dad shoes on. These guys state that they were suspicious of these three folks crossing the street and suspected that they had firearms on them. Now, if you look at the video of these kids crossing the street, I will agree, it does look like they are concealing firearms, but we don't know their ages, at least I don't know their ages by looking at this video, and we don't know for sure that they are concealing. In other words, you don't, don't just pull people over because you suspect that they may be juveniles and they may, may be concealing firearms. So these guys, officers, probably had reason to believe that these three guys were involved in a previous shooting. However, tell me if you think they had probable cause and tell me if you think they acted appropriately as far as protecting and serving. Those fellas that just walked in, can you send them out to talk to us, please? Because I need to talk to them. What's the problem? They haven't taken my daughter from the bus. 
I need to go talk to them. What's the problem? Right now. I need to talk to them. Right now. What did they do? They were walking in the middle of the street and I need to talk to them. So please send them out here. What do you mean? Man, this isn't up for debate. They need to come outside. You are. You have to. You are. I was walking on my window and they literally Yeah, they crossed over and not a crosswalk. So please send them outside for me. There is no crosswalk. 97. Send them outside. Do you think this is going to be anything better? I'm saying, he's saying, I'm saying to you, Randy. Look out, Randy. Look out, Randy. Send them out. Then act like one and send the gentleman out. Okay. Okay. They are mine. Okay. He's a police officer. He's asking okay. for the gentleman. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. What is that? Get to the corner to get my gun. So you're not going to send them out. You're not going to send them out. You're not going to send them out. So let's go. You're not going to send them out. Okay. Okay. You're not going to send them out. 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 Why? I mean, are, are you going to send them out or not? Because this can go an entirely different way. You want to get arrested for obstructing? We can go that route. Okay, folks, I feel the need to interject right here. Obviously, this guy just threatened this lady with obstruction. He said if, they, if she didn't bring him out there, that she could get be arrested for obstruction. Now, these guys are forcing the escalation. Again, as I stated in the notes while you're watching, the lady's voice sounded agitated, of course, as it should have been, but she was not arguing with them. She wasn't argumentative. In other words, she wasn't raising her voice, trying to um, get things to escalate. These guys are forcefully trying to get her to escalate. They're trying to make her mad. Uh, they're, they're trying to escalate the situation so that all of a sudden they can say, see, she was the problem. So that when reinforcing officers come, they can see that somehow she is all of a sudden the problem, but nobody, they don't think anybody is seeing what these guys are doing to force the escalation of this situation. Jay walking. Jay walking. They crossed right. through the alley in this way. I don't understand why you're saying they jay walking. Okay. All right. So when my daughter come and they start crossing this way, are they going to get started for jay walking as well? That's ridiculous. You understand you're just prolonging this. You realize you're just prolonging this. That's what they tell her. You realize they're, they're basically telling her whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You're just making this last longer. Kind of sounds like a rapist, if you know what I mean. I mean, ATF boy over here has got a really poor choice for words. Notice that Dad Shoe Boy, the, the officer, has gone back to the car and he's calling for backup. For jaywalking. For jaywalking, folks. Now, let's get this out of the way. We know this isn't about jaywalking. This is about the shooting that happened last summer. That's what this is all about. Had these officers at least said something about this to this mother instead of lying to her and trying to lie as they go and say it's about jaywalking, I don't know, maybe as a good mother she would have cooperated, maybe. I mean, think about this. This mom is not the ringleader of some gang, I'm pretty sure of that. So if she believes and thinks that maybe her children or the kids who are in her place were involved in a shooting, I'm just saying maybe she would have cooperated. I'm not saying she would have, but it's very possible. She would have been more likely instead of some ridiculous lie that these guys are hanging on about jaywalking. And I'd also like to mention, and we'll talk about this later on too, if this were some big giant criminal ring that these guys needed to hang their hat on for this, why didn't they show up with a warrant? Why are they waiting till these kids walk across a residential street and not jaywalk, but call it jaywalking in order to try to find a reason to talk to them because if they were truly suspects and truly dangerous to society, wouldn't the judge have given you that warrant that you needed to talk to these kids? Don't yell at me. Yes, because you want to sit out no, here. No, because I'm going to tell you that I don't have a legal right. Hey, Armand, I'm his mother. I'm yeah, and when I, 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 I try to... If you shut up for one second... Yeah, bro. Yeah, and when I try to tell you that I don't have a legal right, you're going to tell me that I don't have a legal right. Yeah, but you don't have a legal right. I don't ever condone violence unless somebody is being attacked. This punk is telling this woman in her yard on her property that if she would just shut up for one minute. Sometimes it takes a nice backhand to knock some sense into a punk. I'm not saying that that's what should have happened in this situation. I'm just saying there are situations in life that when somebody yells at you in your yard and they're wrong, that there are situations that can resolve the situation and quite possibly rattle that person and get a little bit more logic into their head to the point where they're thinking straight again. Because this boy ain't thinking straight. 
You do not walk on somebody else's property and tell them they need to shut their mouth whenever you are the one escalating the situation. As you can see, this is a perfect example of one, no accountability, because this guy feels brave enough to say this to a person who has done nothing wrong. But also, this is a backhanded way of escalating a situation and getting that woman to do something, and then you got her. What is their name? If you don't want to give it to me, I will arrest you for obstructing. I'm not playing around. What is their name? Once again, the threat. If you do not give us their names, we're going to arrest you for obstruction. In this next video clip, the main thing I want you to pay attention to is not really the conversation, but notice, remember the premise for stopping these three kids as they walk in this house and the story that they're sticking to with this mother, or at least uh, if she's the mother of the kids, I don't know for sure, but the resident, the homeowner here, is that these kids were jaywalking, right? This is a pretty big deal, apparently, in this portion of Ohio. Jaywalking's pretty bad. Pretty bad, right? Notice this next clip of the people jaywalking through, in between, and past law enforcement and their vehicles. Now, the stuff must have really hit the fan regarding this incident because since then, a full video by this local police department was put out on YouTube, and I'll post the link down below, of this entire incident is de described in detail, in pretty good detail, actually. They say that Lorraine officers, in collaboration with an agent from the ATF, were conducting patrols of areas identified through statistical analysis as hotspots for shots fired complaints. Now, that's no reason to pull anybody over for jaywalking. Again, we know that was a lie. But when they use phrases like statistical analysis um, or intelligent uh, investigation work or whatever, those are buzzwords or keywords, kind of a dog whistle type thing for profiling. And in law enforcement, you do have to profile sometimes because if a particular group of people, white, black, Hispanic, it doesn't matter if a particular group is known for performing a certain crime, you profile them. This is their way of saying we profile this neighborhood, but it makes us all feel better about it whenever they use that term. They state that the center of the most prolific area is a 100 block of West 27th. This is actually 126 West 27th that we're talking about. So they're specifically saying that this is the area that we are most concerned with. They state that a group of three males was observed standing on the corner of West 27th and Reed. As officers passed, they noticed that the males appeared to be holding something in their waistbands, which it does. And while driving by, the officers saw that the males were scanning their surroundings. Okay, whatever, that doesn't make somebody guilty. While their body would twist as they scanned, the arms that appeared to be concealing something stayed stiff and unmoving. All right. As officers drove back through, they observed the males walking eastbound in the lane of travel parallel to the provided sidewalks. Now, what they're having to do here is still kind of cling to the jaywalking thing because, hey, that was the story they stuck with all along while they were lying to the mother. So they kind of got to throw this in there, even though they mentioned that they had other reasons why they were watching these three guys. Officers witnessed a violation of Lorraine codified Ordinance 371. This is the jaywalking, where a sidewalk is provided and its use is practical. Look, these people were crossing the street. They were not trying to walk through the street. You can tell the direction they were coming in that they were coming from an angle. So they crossed the street. They were not simply walking through the middle of the street. It says they attempted to conduct a pedestrian stop by activating the red and blue lights on their unmarked police vehicle, activating the siren exiting vehicle, and calling for the males to hold up a second as they approached on foot. The males looked at the officer, stated, oh, blank, it's the boys. Hurry up, then proceeded to walk into the front door. The officers were then confronted by the resident of the home, Mary Hildreth, and a verbal exchange occurred. Now, they're trying to set this up as if she was confrontational right off the bat, that they confronted her. They use that word confronted. They don't say that the homeowner came outside and we started to discuss. They say confronted because that's implying that there was a confrontation. And they follow that up with a verbal exchange occurred. During the exchange, officers explained several times, making it sound like they were polite and nice in explaining this, explained several times to Hildreth that they had official business with the three males who had just entered the home and they needed to speak with them. Now, they lie about what that official business is, so the officers are lying at this point. 
Hildreth acknowledged the officer's statement, but demanded to know what business the officers had with the males as they were juveniles. I think she was right for doing that. Despite having explained their business, Hildreth refused to allow officers to make contact with the males, and the encounter turned to a heated argument. The officers are the ones who escalated this whole argument, and they continued to lie about it. This woman thought that it was ridiculous that these kids were being talked to or hunted down by law enforcement over jaywalking. Again, as my previous statement states earlier, had they been truthful about there being some kind of a potential investigation, they needed to talk to these young men regarding that investigation of a shooting or anything else for that matter, she may have been willing to to let them talk. But the fact that they lied about it and brought some ridiculous thing like jaywalking up, she knew that that was bull, and I wouldn't let officers talk to my child if they said, we need to speak to your son regarding jaywalking. They again repeat that the residence is located in the very center of the crime mapping hotspot for shots fired. They also say that they have responded to this address 24 times over the past 24 months. And they say that complaints at this address include domestic violence, weapons, ordinance violations, shots, fired, assaults, disorderly conduct, noise disturbances, sex offenses, menacing, and other complaints. Numerous arrests of the occupants of this house have occurred as a result of these calls. You know what this tells me? Here we go again. Law enforcement, court system, do your job. Are these people at this address a true threat? Are they a threat? If they're a threat, why are they jaywalking? Why are you not doing something? Is this another case where these guys are going to be the ones who go shoot up a mall or something like that? Is this another case where we let them slip through the cracks? If you guys have been here 24 times in two years, why haven't you done anything? If these people are just making frivolous calls, then do something about it. Why do you keep coming back? If they're crying wolf, then don't go back. But if they're a true threat, why are you here for the 25th time talking to these people? You're not doing your job. You are not doing your job. I will support you doing your job properly. But you and the, and the court systems are failing this community. And yet you continue to harass people like this. Is there probably a guilty party at this house doing something criminal? Probably. <laughs> probably so. How do you address it? The right way. You do not try to pin some kind of stupid jaywalking charge on somebody. You get a doggone warrant and you go to these people's houses and you pick these people up and you bring them to the station and you question them and you either let them go or you lock them up. But you do not talk to a person the way you people have talked to these people. I'm sorry, I thought this was America.